Good day there viewers and a warm welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. My name is Cliff and I'm a gem cutter from Southern Australia. So in today's video I'll be faceting a pear shape design out of topaz and normally I don't like faceting pears because usually they're way too shallow in the pavilion and they just don't have a lot of scintillation. But recently I saw a pear shape being faceted by a gentleman in the USA. His name is Brent and he also has a faceting channel called Gems by MBK. And this particular pear design that he faceted, which actually he did a great job, was a design by Jeff Graham and it's a master's design called Utopia. As I mentioned earlier this year, I was looking for gems that would challenge me a lot more than what I had been cutting previously. And this particular pear design, being a master's design, a master's cut, was really up my alley. So let's have a look at this piece of topaz, which comes from Brazil. And it's an odd shape, and as you can see, I've marked out the outline where the pear will be, and I've roughly put in the center point where I'll be gluing the dot stick. I need to remove that corner there, so I'll just uh, preform it a little bit. But also, like all topaz, it has a cleavage plane. So like many gems, they have what's known as perfect cleavage. Topaz is one of those gems that does have a cleavage plane. So if you're a faceter, you kind of want to avoid faceting flat on that plane. And as you can see by the arrows indicated, it's showing the direction of that particular cleavage plane on this particular gem. So how do you detect where the cleavage plane is on the piece of topaz? Usually it's indicated by shiny patches on the surface of the gem. And if you look closely enough under a loop, you'll actually see the direction of the striations, which is actually the direction of these arrows. So if I were to cut a flat facet directly on top of that cleavage plane, there is a very strong chance that a piece of the gem would just simply shear off. And probably the worst place to have a cleavage plane is where the table of the gem is. So the rule of thumb is to orient the rough at least 7 to 10 degrees away from the cleavage plane when you're faceting. So before I start faceting, let's have a look at this particular design by Jeff Graham, which is a master's stone design. And by no means at all am I a master faceter. I wish I was. So for the benefit of the new viewer, this is called the first transfer where the gem is glued onto a brass stop stick and it's allowed to set overnight. For all my current subscribers and for those people who have been watching my channel for a long time, here's some footage of what it's like living in Australia with the current bushfires and just check out all the smoke where I live. So they call Australia the sunburnt country and as you can see by this footage, things are looking very dry and sunburnt. I live in a farming district and this is what it looks like just outside of my door. Um, it's a lot of stubble and a lot of grass after the crops have been stripped and things are looking very orange outside because of the smoke haze and you can see a big smoke cloud in the distance there and it's ready to roll into where I live. So if you take notice of all those hills in the background and the camels and that, you can see that in this footage now, this is the following day, the smoke has descended, it's hit ground level and you can't see anything in the distance. So things are looking a little bit gloomy at the moment and this is what it looks like living in Australia with all these bushfires. Most people have to put up with this at this time of year at the moment, it's pretty bad. So thank you to all those subscribers who wished me and my family all the best during the bushfire season, but so far we are all safe. So let's get back into the faceting. So we're going through our basic setup by inserting the dot into the quill of the faceting machine and locking it in. And also we'll go through a quick checklist of the things you will need before you actually start cutting a gem. So a few things you need, a loop, check. Optivisor, check, and a caliper, check. All things you will need when you're faceting. So 
So I'm cutting the pavilion facets first and then the girdle outline but all is not what it seems with this particular design and we're going to go through the design details after I've done this and I'll show you what is wrong with this design. So I've completed the first set of pavilion facets and the girdle outline and it looks all pretty good but at close inspection something's not quite right and one of the girdle facets is not meeting correctly and let's have a bit of a close up. So as you can see that one of the facets doesn't align and also for one of my viewers I don't know who you are but he's always on to me occasionally that I've missed the meat point by B's diaphragm so this image is for you and hopefully you can see this one a little bit more clearly in fact I might blow it up a little bit more anyway before I started faceting this gem I got onto Gem Cut Studio first and punched out all the indexes and angles and it showed me that there was an issue before I even started. So I got in contact with one of my faceting colleagues in my faceting group down here in Victoria. His name's Tony and Tony also had a look at the design and Tony's a lot better with Gem Cut Studio than I am and he looked at it and he tweaked it up a little bit so I'm using his design at the moment or should I say Tony's tweak on Jeff Graham's design. So thank you Tony for that. I'll be using that little tweak within the process of cutting this particular gem. And even having said that, I've noticed even on Tony's tweak that there are a few little issues within the design. So I'm gonna to have to work through that. But currently I'm going through the sequence that Tony sent me through Gem Cut Studio. So it gives you guys a good idea of what's going on with the process of faceting this particular gem. So we're going through all the steps of faceting the pavilion and if you have a look at the original diagram you'll notice that some of the tolerances on the angles are cut within one hundredth of a degree and to be honest that's a little bit ridiculous no fastening machine really could cut that and I guess it's a guesstimate when you do cut those angles currently we're going through all the crown facets till finally we facet the last facet on the crown which will be the table so even with the crown as you can see the complexity of facets is quite amazing on this design and there we have it it's finally done. I will also include a computer animated gif of what the gem should look like once completed. So as you can see there is a pavilion facet out of alignment and that needs to be fixed up by cheating it in. 
but when you cheat a facet in, whether you're polishing or grinding it, you end up with a ghost facet. So where the black outline is with the texture, that's where the ghost facet is. So how do you fix that up? Well, there is a simple solution to that. You need to use your cheater. So depending where your cheater is, my cheater is where you can see where my finger is. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rotate it clockwise while I'm polishing at the same time. And you can also do this while you're grinding. But I'm deciding to cheat this facet in and getting rid of that ghost facet at the same time. So I'm gonna start by just slightly planting the gem onto the polishing disc. And I'm starting to the right of the facet and I need to cheat to the left and drag that facet across as I'm polishing it and smoothing out that ghost facet. Be careful that you do not overturn on the cheater when you're doing this because then you will start to overcut into the next facet. So if you do this correctly, you will get rid of that ghost facet, but not only that, you'll have a very good meat point. And a lot of this is all about trial and error, practice, and getting used to your faceting machine. So when facets are that far out of alignment on the pavilion, even though you've cheated them in and you've got fairly good alignment with the meat points, on the rotation there will be misalignment on the crown. So as you can see in this piece of footage, both facets have been correctly realigned by meeting where they should be on the pavilion using that technique where I moved the cheetah at the same time as I was polishing. In the following scenes you'll see all the stages of the pavilion being cut and polished. Clearly I can't show you every little bit of video footage for every little facet that I cut. If I did, I'd probably be overcutting and the gem would be a mess. I thought I would mention also that if you've been faceting for six months or 12 months, don't let such designs put you off from having a go at them. Sure, some of the tolerances on these angles might be within one hundredth of a degree, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. But by fastening such a design, which is a little bit out of your depth, I kind of think this is a little bit out of my depth, but I'm having a go at it because I want to get out of my comfort zone. You'll be pleasantly surprised how well you do. And if you fail, well, you fail, but you will learn something out of it. I will guarantee you that. And by trying the really difficult designs, it will put you in good stead for any other design that comes along your way. When I first saw this design, it didn't bother me about the tolerances in the angles and all the facets I had to polish. In point of fact, my machine doesn't even have any settings on it for one tenth of a degree. I have to gauge roughly where that one tenth is and facet by feel alone. So if I make a mistake, I've got to try to fix it up. And for me, it's a learning experience and just having fun. One of the aspects I find disappointing is that certain designs, and for example this design is an example, it's not 100% accurate according to the schematics, and when you're looking at such low tolerances you don't believe that it could be that accurate to be quite honest. But some people actually publish designs that haven't been tested, and they shouldn't be released on the marketplace or even on the net, even for free. So that disappoints me, I think. All designs, if people are designing stuff, they should try to test it or get someone to test it for them and hopefully it works out. And that includes the sequencing of the design. Sometimes the sequencing is not quite right and that needs to be sort of looked at also. For those people who are interested in this piece of footage, you may notice there is a slight veil at the pointy end of the topaz. Well that veil is actually the cleavage plane within the topaz. And you may remember earlier on I used some highlighter pen and marked out some arrows pointing exactly where it was.
So the pavilion is now complete and I'm ready to start fastening the crown but I thought I would show anyone who was interested in trying out this design how many little flaws there are in it and this has been sort of tweaked a little bit and even when it's been fixed up on the girdle outline check out how many facets are misaligned. So if anyone wants to try this particular design you've got a little bit of a job ahead of you and you kind of wonder how those people who were cutting this gem for a competition actually got it to work out. So on to fastening the crown and I think this is going to be a little bit tricky when I do facet this crown. Currently I'm doing the secondary transfer by gluing on another dop stick and then removing the original dop stick and placing it within the quill and I'm all set to go again. So I'm cutting the first set of crown facets. So I'm currently cutting the table and with the other crown facets I'm finding there's a couple facets that just will not align properly and those are the kite facets and for some reason I just cannot get those to cheat in the way they should be cheated in and they just look just dreadful to be quite honest so I'm just thinking what I should do now so you'll see what's going on in the next scene and then don't know what I'm going to do whether I should polish them in, we'll see what happens. So I've decided to cut my losses and recut both the brake facets and the main facets. There are a few stragglers with the star facets from the previous cut, so I'll have to recut those. And the good thing was I had plenty of thickness in the girdle, so I can do all this. Now if you cut your girdle too thin the first time around, that leaves you with no options to do a recut. In the following scenes you'll see that I've recut all the crown facets and polished them. So this means we're getting closer to the end of another video but it's not finished yet this video because we have what we call the final reveal where I have to take the gem off the dop and remove the glue and you'll see what it looks like on a rotator and if it's not too smoky outside and there's enough sunlight I might take it out in the sun if that's possible. Also, in closing, I would personally like to thank Tam and John for all your wonderful emails. A lot of my subscribers send me an email and I'll put that in the description. I'd like to thank Tony for taking the time to tweak this design. It's helped me out a lot and it gave me a good understanding about that girdle outline, so thank you Tony. Also, thank you to Jaws. He's done a little cameo in this video, but Jaws is back home again and he's having a great little holiday with me and my wife and just loving it. So until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves wherever you may live on this planet. I wish you all the best and it's bye for now. Thank you.